everybody, I'm Jonathan Randall, and welcome to another episode of How You Like Me Now. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there and having a terrific summer. You know, one thing that's really important to me that I've talked about a lot is consideration for others. I hope all of you out there will try to have it and be aware of yourself and your surroundings. Considering other human beings in your actions is a really good thing. When I see people being inconsiderate, I feel like I start turning into like this Larry David type Incredible Hulk. Yeah, you won't like me when you're inconsiderate. And then I tell them off and not in a very nice way, but I am trying to contain the Larry David Hulk within and not chastise every single person I come across that's in an inconsiderate dick. But goddamn, it is so hard. No wonder the Hulk was always trying to get away from people. By the way, I keep seeing women on dating apps being like, they're attracted to Larry David. I'm like, oh really, are you? We'll see after you go out with me. So they announced that Gal Gadot will be returning for Wonder Woman 3, and that has really upset a bunch of geeks. Now, I say geeks because I consider myself a nerd, but if you're upset that the actress playing the character in the old universe is gonna be in the new universe, then you are stepping it up from just being a nerd, and you are a geek, my friend. So these geeks don't understand how Gal could still be Wonder Woman when Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck won't be being Superman and Batman, and that it won't make any sense, and it's gonna be so confusing for the new James Gunn universe. It's like, give it a rest. I don't think the studios give a shit if people are confused. They just care about making their money, okay? They act out of the best interest to line their pockets, not satisfying geeks and making sure that everything lines up the way they want it to be. I don't get it how it's so easy for people to suspend disbelief and accept that people have powers and can fly or there's a rope that makes you tell the truth, but they can't accept if a superhero doesn't have a comprehensive universe where everything is true to what came before it. You know, comic books would always have different writers and artists, and often the characters' looks and even their personality or history would change a little bit depending on who was writing and drawing those issues. So comic book films are actually staying truer to their comic book origins by slightly changing things and not having it be exactly all the same as what came before it, you know? so. Get over it, geeks. This is just mindless entertainment, okay? It's for you to escape your life for two hours. These films aren't Citizen Kane. So, I got catfished over the weekend, yeah, and it was one of my worst dating experiences ever. Uh, not only did this girl not look like her picture, but even worse, she was dull, entitled, and just a shitty person. She actually went to the bathroom at one point during our date, and I just wanted to get up and leave so badly, but I didn't because I'm like, that'll be rude, and I don't want to hurt this girl's feelings, and I don't want to give her a complex, but I wish I did. I actually wanted to leave as soon as she showed up, didn't look like her pictures, and by the way, brought a horrible vibe, but I felt bad, and I'm trying like to be less superficial with women. I wanted to give her a chance, but... After my experience with her, I've decided to stop being nice and stop being like the bigger person or whatever you want to call it. And if I meet a woman from a dating app and she misrepresents herself or she comes into the day with a bad attitude or if she just like isn't a good person, like to let her know and make sure she knows these things. That way she hopefully won't do it to another person. Instead of being concerned about hurting her feelings, I gotta be worried about my own feelings. So last week, I talked about Palestinians protesting against Hamas in Gaza, and I had a lot of people criticize me. First of all, I wasn't the one protesting, okay? Palestinians were, and their voices matter. I mean, it's crazy. Their voices have been silenced enough by Israel. They don't need it from their own people. The truth is, Hamas does not allow freedom of expression, and that's a problem. As a Jewish person, I think I have a pretty good understanding of the oppression the Palestinian people face at the hands of Israel. But that 
doesn't make their leaders, and certainly not Hamas, totally innocent. I'm fully aware that Israel is the one who empowered Hamas so they could destabilize the PLO, but that doesn't make them solely responsible for all the actions Hamas ever commits for eternity. Two things could be correct at the same time. And oppression, it comes in many forms. Protesters again try to have rallies this week, but were quickly shut down. Several journalists attempting to cover these rallies and these protests were detained by Hamas. Again, these protests, they're not about Hamas as a resistance movement, but because of their authoritarian rule and failure to improve the living conditions in Gaza. Now, obviously, the blockade by Israel and Egypt play the major role in the quality of life in Gaza. But many Palestinians living in Gaza still feel that Hamas's governance is also to blame. Let's be real, Hamas is frequently accused of nepotism and corruption, as well as prioritizing military operations rather than the economy and infrastructure in Gaza. Not to mention that many senior Hamas officials, including their leader, live in far better conditions outside of Gaza while the people live in squalor. Hamas officials and many of their supporters claim that the protests were just organized by Israel. But frankly, blaming everything on Israel and taking absolutely no responsibility for the inhumane quality of life that the Palestinians have is a huge part of the problem. So I was lucky enough to get a screener of the documentary Israelism and I really enjoyed it. It totally hit a nerve with me because of my Jewish upbringing and because so many of my loved ones are still the victim of indoctrination by Zionists. This documentary follows Jews who were raised to have unconditional support for Israel, defending it at all costs. One even joined the IDF and how they came to the realization that not only had they been lied to, but their identity as Jews was built based on that lie. After learning the truth about the occupation and seeing its effects on Palestinians firsthand, not only did it change the way they see Israel, but they started speaking out and fighting for Palestinian human rights, which I think is amazing and so brave because it's hard to go against your own community. This film basically highlights how American Jews are lied to about nearly all aspects of Israel, from its creation to the current treatment of the Palestinian people. You know, one line that totally resonated with me and was something that I heard so much growing up and was like ingrained in my head is that Israel was a land with no people for a people with no land, which is an insane lie because the land did have a people. They're called Palestinians. You know, while Israel arms its own young people with weapons to serve in the Israeli military, it arms Jews in the diaspora with false information and instills in them at a very young age an intense passion to spread and stand by those lies at any cost. I come across this all the time with friends and family who I try to educate about Israel's war crimes, the occupation, but they refuse to listen and many of them won't even have a conversation about it because it challenges their brainwashing so much. It's ironic to me that Zionists throw around terms like anti-Semitism, self-hating Jew, and Pallywood when they have developed their whole perspective on Israel and sometimes their whole personality as a Jew based on Israeli propaganda, which was so much easier for Israel to push before the internet and social media. But now Israel's flagrant human rights violations are on full display and easy for anyone to see. 
You know, another thing that this film highlights that so much time, energy, and money is spent silencing both Jews and critics of Israel. So much is invested in making sure that people don't know about Israel's treatment of the Palestinian people. And it's absolutely crazy to me because there is real anti-Semitism happening all over the world. Anti-Semitism is growing more and more. And instead of investing time and money in not criticizing Israel, we should be investing it in stopping anti-Semitism. You know, during World War II, Hitler wanted to wipe out all the Jews. Thankfully, he did not succeed, but I think inadvertently, he kind of set out this chain reaction that wiped out Judaism. Holocaust was a huge factor in Israel becoming a state. And when it did, far too many people stopped prioritizing Judaism and replaced it with Zionism, which does not represent the values of what it really means to be a Jew. Many Jewish people in the world think that we need Israel because of the Holocaust and we need it to be safe, but I almost think that Israel is an extension of the Holocaust. Rounding up all the Jews, putting them in one place, surrounded by danger where more Jews are killed than anywhere else in the world and where their actions against the population of people that have been living there for generations is so hideous that it reflects poorly on Jews all around the world and makes people everywhere dislike Jews isn't a good thing. It's horrible. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. This puts Jews in more danger and people don't even see it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you're not following me on social media, please do at Jonathan Randall across all platforms. Also, I could really use and would appreciate your support on my Kofi page. I will put the link to that in the description. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. My name's Jonathan Randall. How you like me now?